All right, so we're gonna look at our third Venn diagram example. Um, again, we're given, in this one, percentages. So suppose 60% of people surveyed plan to vote. Of these, 55% identify themselves as liberal. Suppose that overall, 65% of the population identifies themselves as liberal. In choosing a single person at random, find the following probabilities. Um, this one is slightly different because we're not given the intersection of people who plan to vote and the people who identify themselves as liberal. So we're gonna have to figure that out as we begin to complete our Venn diagram. So just like the last two problems, I wanna start by completing a Venn diagram. Get myself out of the way. The two um, events here are that you plan to vote and that you identify yourself as liberal. So it's a little tricky. Um, what I want to think about is who are these people who identify, you know, when this says of these, what it's referring back to is this 60% of the people who plan to vote. So when I talk about of those, that would be the people who are voting and identify themselves as liberal. So, oops, jumped ahead of myself there, sorry. So they're voting and they're liberal and that's 55% of the people who are voting. So that's 60%. So we multiply those two things together and that's gonna give us 0 0.33. That is going to be the intersection. And, I, and I, I get this because this is the, you know, of the people who are voting, of the 60%, 55% identify themselves as liberal. So inside here, the innermost part of my Venn diagram, 0. 33. Okay, so that's the tricky part. Um, now the rest of the Venn diagram kind of draws itself because we know 60% plan to vote. So that leaves us with, uh, where's my pen? 27% in here. And again, in this example, we're given um, percentages. So I'll just convert them to decimal. And then we know that overall 65% of the population identifies themselves as liberal and made these numbers up. So maybe that's not true. Um, that's 32%. Um, so 32 and 33 is the 65% identifying themselves as liberal. 27 and the 33 is the 60% who identify themselves or who say that they plan to vote. So again, once I got the 30, I did some subtraction, 0. 0.60 minus 0. 0.33 to give me the 0. 0.27. And the 0. 0.65 of the population who's liberal, again, subtracting off the 0. 0.33 that I found in the first part in the intersection, and that's giving me the 0. 0.33. 32. Now we still need to figure out who's left. So again, we can add the three regions up. Zero, so 27 plus 33 plus that 32. And that's 65, 72, 82, 92. So that means there's 8% outside of either circle. I'll put those people up here. Okay. That's setting up the Venn diagram. And you know that is the work here in this problem. And then the rest of the work is sort of knowing which pieces identify what probabilities. Okay. So we're going to move on to each of these parts. I'm choosing one person at random. Find the following probabilities. We've completed the Venn diagram, and now the probability that someone identifies as liberal, well, we didn't actually need the Venn diagram for that. 
we were told that it was 65%. Right up here. Next part. Probability that someone identifies as liberal and plans to vote. So that's an intersection. I look at the probability of L and V, and that's the innermost part of the Venn diagram, 0 0.33. In the next part, we're looking for the probability that someone identifies as liberal but does not plan on voting. And again, I could use sort of the V. If I wanted to, I could write this as uh, this could be written as the probability of L and not V like that. Or I can just write not V like I did here. And again, we picked that from the Venn diagram. Who is in L but not in V? It's these 32% here. So that's our result, 0 0.32. Kind of nice, everything's already a percentage for us. Um, the probability that someone does not identify as liberal and does not plan on voting. So they're not in either circle. And we figured that out as well. They're up here, 0 0.08. So notice, you know, that once the Venn diagram is complete, most of the probabilities sort of answer themselves, as long as you know, again, which region you're talking about. Um, the last two are conditional probabilities. The probability that someone identifies as liberal, given that they plan on voting. Um, we actually know this. This is actually given. It's the 55% up here. If we know they're going to vote, 55% of them identify as liberal. So that's exactly what the conditional probability means. What's the probability if you know that they're going to vote, that they're also liberal? That's 55%. But if I did this like the other problems where I set up my fraction bar, and I looked at, OK, Total people who are voting, that is my 60%. And what percentage of those are liberal? And that's my 33 in the intersection. And if I do this division, 0.33 divided by 60, so I do that second. Tab over here and type this in. My computer will figure this out for me. That equals 0 0.33, 0 0.33 divided by 0 0.60. Oh, come on. Why aren't you telling me? Zero point five five. So it's the fifty five percent that we were given initially, and that initial fifty five percent was indeed a conditional probability. Um, so on that same note, let me move myself out of the way for a second. You know, conditional probability has a formula that. Oh no, I want to be over here. Yes. Probability of B given A is equal to the probability of the intersection, A intersect B divided by the probability of A. And so think about how I got the 33%. That's the intersection. So if I look at this slightly differently, if I look at the probability of A intersect B, this would be equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A. If I multiply the previous equation on both sides by that denominator probability of A. And now if, if this is probability of L given V, 
times the probability of B. If I switch letters now. So the probability of, let's see, I'm calling uh, A is now V. So V intersect L. So this, probably they're liberal given that they voted, that's the 55% where it says of these, 55% of them are liberal. If I then multiply that, which is what we did, by my 60% of people who vote, plan to vote, that gives me the 33% of the people that I got in my original intersection. So I'm just kind of showing you there that, you know, those things, these things are related and how we got the Venn diagram completed to begin with also matches with the formulas that we should have for um, conditional probabilities. Yikes. I was going to try to fix this over here. My pen over there. So there we go. There's my pen. I draw a line there and make it a little easier to see. Okay, so the, on top of the line is the general formula. Below the line, I've replaced A and B with V and L, respectively. And, you know, it, it's sort of redoing what we did in originally to draw the Venn diagram. Now I'm going to cover it up. So if you need it, see it, pause it. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the next problem, which is the probability they plan on voting given that they identify as liberal. So now, you know, I could write it out as well, but I can kind of just think about the denominator would be everyone who identifies as liberal, 0 0.65, did that first, and the numerator is everyone inside there who plans to vote. And that's the 0 0.33 in the intersection. And so that's 50.77%. Maybe I can do that a little slower. I'll show you how I got that maybe with the pen. Probability of V given L. Again, I don't, I could use the formula, but I can also just kind of say, okay, don't touch the button. I always happens. No. All right, well, I'm having problems, so. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, the denominator is the 0.65, total, total percentage inside of L, 33 plus 32. And the numerator is what percentage of those also voted to the 0.33. And to see everything laid out with the answers here, there they are, along with our Venn diagram, and this will be the last uh, of the three Venn diagram examples for videos. Hopefully those are helpful. Um, there's a few Venn diagram problems on the worksheets. I might get to those. Uh, this would be another one where maybe I would, um, in Canvas for your test, I would maybe label A, B, C, and D for these four regions uh, in the picture, and then you would fill in uh, to the blanks or maybe a multiple choice, choose the percentages that correspond to those areas, A, B, C, and D. Um, so, you know, what do I mean by that? If I had a rectangle here, and I had my two circles inside, one, and two, I know that's not quite a circle, but that's okay. Like that, uh, I just try to do that really quickly. I might sort of say, okay, complete the areas, you know, in this example, this would be V and L, and then I would say sort of this is A, 
B, part C, and this would be D. And the answers respectively would be, you know, what are those areas? And I would suggest that you do that on paper, but then when you are entering it into Canvas, I would probably have something that looked like this. And then A would be 0 0.27, B would be 0 0.33, C 0 0.32, and D would be 0 0.08. And what this would allow me to do is, if you made a mistake on some other problem involving these percentages, I would be able to determine where your mistake is and I would be able to give you some partial credit should um, your work warrant that. Okay, hopefully that's helpful. And uh, I think there's a couple more videos that I'll be posting for chapter three uh, on combinations and permutations. So I might, I might do it all in one video or I might do it in a couple. All right, that's it. Close this guy out.